the G Way Podcast with Deacon Dirty. What's up, y'all? It's your boy G Way holding it down, G Way Podcast, and I'm kicking it alongside with my man Deacon Dirty. And I have a very special guest in the studio today. We go way back. Uh, my home girl, and I mean that literally. Literally. Talene is in the building. What's up? <laughs> hey, what's going on, oh, my brother? I'm so excited to finally be here and sitting down, man. We have been trying to plan this for a minute you guys so um it it is a blessing to be here and to see all of what god is is doing in your life is is it's really um you know it makes me feel like yes you know i love to <laughs> celebrate people so That's i celebrate what you're doing here at g wade studios is awesome oh well thank you very much uh you know it's a lot of blood sweat and a whole lot of tears a whole lot whole lot of <laughs> lord why <laughs> Poor gay, if you uh, spanish <laughs> yes yes uh but yeah no i appreciate that uh but you know we we go back a minute we always run into each other some award show at some event mm -hmm. chop it up for a minute you know two ships passing in the night at right. times right um tv stations the whole deal but we've only sat down w once, but once. it was via over the phone, yeah. early 2000. Right. So I think enough time has passed. <laughs> it has, quite a bit. A right, lot right. has happened since uh, then. A lot has happened <laughs> since then to where we can catch up and see what's going on in, in each other's world. Mm -hmm. So as you know, our show, we kind of get a little introspective, and we like to learn more about our guests okay. <clears throat> so that we can endear you guys to our audience mm -hmm. and they can get to know a little bit about you. Right. And, you know, you can hawk your wares. And they're like, yeah, I'll buy it from her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that type of thing. So we're we going to take it back a little bit. And, and we were speaking just briefly. Um, now, you, I know that you are from Maryland, mm -hmm. but you say you were born in D.C. I was. I was born in, uh, in, in Washington, D.C., um, which is now Howard University Hospital, but it was yeah, called yeah, yeah. Freeman's Hospital back in yeah, that day. Wow. <laughs> We're going way back. We're going way, I'm going way back. back. <laughs> yep, Freeman's Hospital. Dang. Um, my family is from the D.C. area, mm -hmm. so a lot of them graduated from you know, from Coolidge High School. And and so we just that whole I, I know. Like that whole area, very familiar with the with the DC um with the DC area, but grew up in Clinton, Maryland. Mm -hmm. We decided to move to the Maryland Prince George's County area. So I grew up in Oxon Hill, Fort Washington. Okay. Uh, and then we kind of landed there in Clinton and uh I think from like it was like the fifth grade. Okay. From like the fifth grade all the way to high school. Um, I graduated from Saratsville High School. Okay. Right there in Clinton, Maryland. Wow. Uh, was their very first Miss Saratsville. Really? Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, we're really seriously going way back. And so. Um, now, I'm sure that at that time that it was predominantly it was it was white. it was half and half at that time but still mostly predominantly um caucasian mm -hmm. and it was a, it was interesting it was an interesting transition um i you know like we were talking mm -hmm. off air you know mostly in the dc area and the other areas that i lived in was mostly african-american right right so it was kind of a culture shock you know, when you're coming into this environment where they're, you know, in some areas they were busting some kids from mm -hmm. other areas right, that right, weren't right. so affluent. And, you know, and then you had this mixture going on. Mm -hmm. And so when I entered into the pageant, no one knew I could sing. Okay. Nobody knew about my singing abilities. And so when, when I actually did the pageant, they were like, oh, my God, this girl <laughs> has a voice and she could sing. And, did. and so I actually won the pageant. I was a junior. Okay. So I beat all the seniors. <laughs> they wasn't happy, y'all. Uh, hateration. They, yes. Oh my God. They hate. And I even encountered some racism. Really? During the pageant. I yeah, could imagine. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, That's they, why. They yeah. had some not so nice words afterwards. Like mm. I can't believe that one and things like that. But you know, through through life, you you deal with those things. Mm -hmm. But I don't I don't let it bother me. Yeah. You know, yeah. matter of fact, that person who said those words reached out to me <laughs> years later. Hey, how you doing? Remember, we used to go to high school together. And I'm thinking, like, how could I ever forget you? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, <funny. laughs> it is funny, right? But I didn't hold any grudges. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I said, yeah. hey, I'm doing great. I see you're doing great things. Matter of fact, she went on to be a, a soap opera actress. Really? Yeah. And so she's the Susan Lucci. Um, yeah, right, like the Susan Lucci <laughs> of, 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 of our right. LA. Of our high school. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Yeah. 
<laughs> wow, that's what, no, that's good. That's an interesting story. I've never told that story. I don't think. Gee, you getting stuff out of me. That's good. We start off good. Then. <laughs> Let's dig in some more. <laughs> now you mentioned um, in the, the D.C. area, the elementary school you went to. You mentioned you said Brightwood. I did. Now you didn't mention that, did. but you mentioned yeah, off air. Off air, yeah, Brightwood. Um, mm-hmm. Now what's interesting is I grew up in the Brightwood area, so this oh, is kind of weird to me. Wow. Um, I went to Rudolph Elementary. I don't know what that is. I didn't. I don't remember any of the schools <laughs> other than the one Brightwood. I went to was Brightwood. Well, it's funny because the the building, the apartment building that we lived in, was called Brightwood. Oh wow! And the corner store is called Brightwood. Now my mother probably would know. Possibly. Yeah. Is there any of my family listening to this? You all probably <laughs> know what the Brightwood Kennedy corner store is. What, oh, of course I know where Kennedy Street yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, that was literally like few streets over from my, my grandparents Longfellow Longfellow yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, where wow. I, that's where I hold hung up, out dude. summertime <laughs> hold hanging up. out with my grandparents during the weekend which, which block uh, 1300 block really so closer to Georgia Avenue yeah closer yeah. to Georgia Avenue yeah Wow, yeah. that is crazy. That crazy. We probably crossed paths back many in the a day, times. Didn't even I'm know sure. It. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Who that girl?" <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is funny. Okay, that's what's up. But full circle moment is I named my production company Brightwood uh, Production. Wow. Yeah. So that's How my film and television that? company. Yeah. Interesting story. I love it though because <laughs> it it keeps you. You know, I always think. G that you have to have something that mm-hmm. keeps you rooted yeah. and grounded. Um, and so, you know, hearing stories like that really kind of warms your heart because it's like, okay, this person is serious about their roots right. and where they've come from. Yeah. They're not forgetting no. where they've come Never from. Never that. So <laughs> Never good that. For you. And so you were, you. Uh, it was discovered, I guess I could say, that you could sing when you were like two years old. Yeah. This is by your preschool uh, teacher. Yeah, this was like by my preschool teacher, right? She, um, she, you know, would send the progress reports home weekly with my mom mm-hmm. and with all mothers. And so my mom has still has it to this wow. day. My mother's one of those ones, y'all. She keeps everything. She got my little drawings and all this stuff. Oh, that's what's when up. I was a kid. But shout out to mom. I like shout that out kind to of mom. Stuff. Yeah. Love you, mommy, Latina Smith. <laughs> Latina. <laughs> so we um we would she would get these progress reports and on it it said that you know she loves to. Um, sing and she learned songs very easily. Okay. So this was at a very early mm-hmm. age, and I do believe, like the word of God says, you know, when 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 you know, like God knew you before the mm-hmm. foundation mm-hmm. of the world, and I think He kind of knows what He wants you to be and right, what right, part right. to play in life. Yeah. And so from a very early age, you know, singing music, you know that, and then my stepfather was a, a DJ. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he spent everything new in the house you know he had the record pool so he was getting all the new stuff (laughs) so it was easy you know music was a very big part of my life yeah 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 wow and so started writing at like 13 started writing at 13 Mm -hmm. god you really did do your homework i I did i did i started writing at 13 and recording professionally at 13 um and i still you know it's it's interesting how you evolve as an artist. Mm-hmm. Some people just want to sing. Yeah. They never, ever pick up the pen to write mm-hmm. and actually pen a song. But um, I was really blessed early on to have that writing, you know, ability to go along with the singing. Right, right. Because I, you can't, listen, y'all, singers, y'all can't make no money <laughs> unless you're writing. They got to pen them <laughs> songs. They got to pen them. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> now, sure. did you know that? Well, did you know that early on it was just you was just going with your flow? I was going with the flow, mm-hmm. you know, and growing up, gee, I was around a lot of people in music who did a lot of different things. And all of those influences kind of, I think, rubbed off on me. And I was always a person that loved like I loved English mm-hmm. class. Mm-hmm. So writing that was, was kind of. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of like my thing. So I think it kind of all just flow together okay yeah okay um what junior high 
Middle school. Middle school. Oh, my goodness. What was the name of the middle school? Ooh, you really trying my brain. You know how long ago that was? Ooh. <laughs> uh, Ten years Stephen ago, girl. Stop Decatur playing. Stephen Decatur Middle School. Stephen Decatur Middle School. Yeah, okay. that's that's in that's in the Clinton area Is also. It? Yeah, okay. Stephen Decatur Middle School. Dope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, but... <laughs> Uh, what what was the high school again? Saratsville. Saratsville. Yeah. Now Saratsville did. Yeah. Saratsville okay. did have a junior high, but they decided to close that down mm-hmm. and bus everybody over to Stephen Decatur, gotcha. and they turned it into middle school instead of junior, junior high. So high I was right at that transition mm-hmm. from junior high school to middle school, and so we had the seventh and eighth graders there, and then in the ninth grade. We, you know, went Saratsville. to Saratsville. Yeah. yeah, see, and I always wanted the full experience. So when when I got to the ninth grade, mm-hmm. I could have gone mm. to high school, but I wanted to graduate. Yeah, I so, got you. You know, <laughs> I, I wanted that I wanted you that experience. Wanted that yeah, so paper. I graduated three okay. times. You gotcha, know what I'm saying? <laughs> gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and so now you are you, you writing at 13. You're mm-hmm. discovering that, you know, you got this voice. Mm. Uh, you you doing uh, talent shows? Yeah, I understand you did a talent show you several times, if not with uh, Tanya Blunt. I, man, when I tell you this man has done his homework, now Tanya Bl- <laughs> Tanya <laughs> Blunt is a beast. Now Tanya is a beast. We have absolutely crossed paths several times. Mm-hmm. Um, enduring talent shows and extremely gifted her and her brother Willie. <laughs> Willie Blunt, you know yeah. Willie. Mm-hmm. Willie also. Willie and I used to do praise and worship at a church in Maryland. Okay. Um, and uh, it was it, it, he's such a gift and a talent, and him him and his sister both. So it's it was great, you know, being able to grow up with those kind of talents mm-hmm. around you because yeah. it pushes you, you know, it makes you better. Right. Now, when did you decide singing is what I want to do? Mm, I, get, I think William you, Murphy's song is Praise is What I Do. Praise <laughs> do. But when did you realize yeah. singing is what you do? Wow, early. I, I would say I would say when I was in the third grade, um, mm-hmm. my third grade school teacher, Miss Adams, God rest her soul, I'm sure she's no longer with us, um, was very instrumental in the whole choir chorus thing. Okay. And then we did like musical <coughs> choir type Got of you, stuff. right, yeah, yeah. And it was so much fun. Like I love the whole stage and the lights and the, you know, once you get over your jitters mm-hmm. and your your stage fright. Right. Um, but I think at thirteen was when I kinda got over that doing the first talent show because before, you know, you sing with a group of people. You got your peeps, you mm-hmm. know, you're not worried. It's right. every, we all doing this thing together. But when you're by yourself, you know, all eyes are on oh, you. Yeah, and it's man. like, uh-oh, <laughs> I can't miss a note, mm-hmm. you know. Don't be having the wrong movements. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I, I would say, I would say very early on when mm-hmm. I was about the fifth grade, I okay. knew. That's you know. what I wanted to do. And then you you have all your idols. So, you know, you want to be like, mm-hmm. oh, I want to be the next Mariah. I want to be the next <laughs> Whitney. Right, right, right. I want to be the next. And I loved Stacey Lattisaw. Uh, you know, no, oh, grew Stacey. up on Stacey. Hey, Stacey. Shout out to Stacey Lattisaw. She was one of DC's original. Yeah, original, original. Yeah, they came out. The, she the was pop. 13, I think, when she 12 yeah, or 13. Her and Johnny Gill linked yep, up and Johnny. was doing that thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of great talent that comes out of the D.C. Maryland area. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's funny. you mean, I've totally forgot. Now I didn't forget about, about Stacey last week. But, yeah, no, yeah. that's what's up. Yeah. Um, so Love talent on a show. two-way street. Yes. That was my song. <laughs> and, you know, it was years later that I realized that it was a remake. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I didn't know that either. She made it her young, own. You like ain't thinking about no more remakes at, at that all. age. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, but Let Me Be Your Angel. Let Me Be Your Angel. I had grooves in my records to like all of those songs. <laughs> Look, I'm dating myself for real. That's young. funny. Speaking of records, you said that uh, <clears throat> your stepfather used to tell you to stop all that singing. Oh, my gosh. Yes, he did. When I tell y'all, G-Wade has been looking at all of my <laughs> interviews. I'm y'all. on out here. <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. And my mom would have to tell him, leave that girl alone. Let her do you her know, thing. Let her do her thing. <laughs> and, of course, later on in life, you know, um, even though my, my mother and my stepfather aren't together, mm. he's still very supportive. Okay. Like when I went to um, Atlantic City and did that two-month um, residency. residency man I mean he came up you nice. know he came up with his 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 current wife and they you know enjoyed the show got to take pictures you know afterwards and nice. so the support of my family has always been 
been great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but so you you essentially are from a musical family. Who who you know? I mean, I, you your know, stepfather plays. Yeah, a DJ, he did but the DJ, your but biological was he a singer nope, or he was not. My grandfather mom, okay. was the singer in the family. Okay, the Cap Calloway, and, up right? In there. <laughs> my grandfather had the deep baritone. Oh wow! Um, and he used to travel DC with a group, and I can don't ask me what the name of the group is because I don't know, I mm-hmm. don't remember. But um, beautiful voice, beautiful, beautiful voice. And I remember at his at his home going, the pastor said, you know that tour is being passed to you Mm. and you're going to get to go places and do things that your grandfather never had an opportunity to do and even while he was living I was you know there was a lot of things that I was able to do and experience and 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 I think you know he was definitely very proud Mm -hmm. you know of the accomplishments that I had made and was you know definitely one of my biggest fans next to my mom and yeah so I miss my grandfather. That's, I get I get a little teary eyed. Yeah, right, there. right. Yeah, miss I feel him a you. lot. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Now, being from the D.C., Maryland, Virginia, the D.M.V. area, did you sing in any go-go bands? <laughs> and if not, how? And if not, how dare you? <laughs> oh my God, Gia, you go, you go really right, man. Listen, so. There were several go-go bands that were trying to get me to sing with them. Mm -hmm. And I did sing with one. And I'm going to tell y'all, I don't remember the name of the band. This was in Maryland? This was in Maryland. It wasn't Northeast Groovers. Northeast Groovers. I do know the the keyboard player, Lamont Perkins, was actually... His stepfather was my business partner when I had my studio Oh, I was going to talk about that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... um, yeah, I don't. I'm trying to think who. who I'm trying to think of the Maryland band? bands. Uh, oh, who was the one that played the the horn? Little Benny, little little Benny, Benny. and the Masters. Little Benny and the I Masters. I sung with them for a wow, hot second. Wow, that is crazy. And then I, I saw. I saw you on stage. No, I was only there for a hot. And when I say hot second, because oh, my hot. mama was like, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, no. So then I was in a all girl group that, oh, was, uh, that used to be a go go band group. All the girls, girls it was, uh, royalty queens, I believe, was the name of the group. Okay, and they um wanted to go. It wasn't a Michelle 40. Blackwell. And Michelle, what was her think, name? I don't think that. No, that okay. name doesn't sound familiar. But that was a all. all, all they wanted to go top forty, so that's why they recruited me. Gotcha. Because okay. they wanted you know, the vocal yeah, ability yeah, yeah. that was a little different from the go-go thing. But every now and then we'd hit, you know, a few go-go yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah, you got to. We, you know, <laughs> I mean, there's nobody from the DMV that doesn't love go-go. Yeah. Um, you know, love Chuck Brown mm-hmm. and the Soul R. Searchers. The, the Godfather. You know, you can't, you can't, um, you can't live in that area and not love go go. Facts. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, Sugar Bear. Oh yeah. You know? EU Experience EU. Unlimited. Absolutely. Come on yeah, now. Yeah. Well, those, <laughs> those are those are those are some of the icons, you know, in go go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm 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 still a go go head to this day. You know, every so often I'm, I'm in the car. I got to turn. Got to turn it on. I got to turn on some man. I got to I got to have it. You know what I'm saying? That's funny. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. But yeah, I thought maybe I would have saw you on stage somewhere, but Mama shut that down. Mama shut that down. Because Go Go's was always kind of wild, too. I don't know what? if you ever used to go to the Go Go's. Man, the Go Go's were off the chain. Yeah, they was always <laughs> wild, man. You, <laughs> yeah. You, you go to the wrong one. Yeah, you, have you a never know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know Might not come out. Yeah, right. I mean, not without a few lumps. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, let's fast forward a little bit because um, at some point uh, you had gotten. Um, the opportunity to audition for Atlantic Star. Now, from what I understand, mm-hmm. your attorney mm-hmm. had introduced you to? Yeah, yeah, Lisa. I don't remember Lisa's last name. That's terrible. Um, Lisa was my attorney at the time, and she was good friends with a gentleman named Todd, who was good friends with Atlantic Star. Okay. And he was. Sh- they were sharing with him that they needed a new lead female vocalist. 
And she said, oh, well, I just have a client that I just signed on mm-hmm. that I think would be perfect. <coughs> I right, mean, right, like, right. you know, everybody always compares Barbara and I a lot. Okay. People think that I'm Barbara. Y'all, I'm not Barbara Weathers. <laughs> I love Barbara. Shout out to Barbara. I'm, I'm Talene. I'm, Kia Anderson is Kia, what's yeah. so on I was gonna say that. the album. Kia, <laughs> Kia Anderson, Anderson is what's on the mm. album. So sometimes people say, well, did you st- same with the line? Yeah, I did. Kia Anderson is what's in the credits. Mm-hmm. Talene is my middle name. Right. So that's in 2000. And I started modeling again and I wanted a stage name. So mm-hmm. I just decided to use my middle name and that's it's kind of stuck right, ever right. since. But um, but yeah, Kia Anderson. Um, so I, I did. I auditioned over the phone. Yeah. With the guys. And they were like, oh, wow. OK, well, great. You know, give us we'll give you a call in a few days and we may fly you out to L.A. This is where we are, you know, working on the project. And so um they called back. They said, okay, we're going to book your flight. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, they were signed to Arista Records. And so they did. They flew me out straight off the plane, y'all. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And you know, when you're young, I was 23 at the time. When you're young, and your adrenaline is running. Mm-hmm. You're not thinking about being tired. Like, now somebody fly me halfway across the country. <laughs> I'm going to be tired. I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> you're sleeping on the plane. <laughs> so... um went straight to the studio mm-hmm. the sal benford studio and i think it was called palm <laughs> trees or palm something lord have mercy i don't know palm y'all Springs. was palm something was the name of the studio oh, the studio okay gotcha. and so um went there audition i'll always love you shout out to my girl whitney houston um, oh, that's, what's up. that's what was, you say that's what i sang mm-hmm. for my audition and they were like wow you know great you know we so i went to the hotel Kind of, you know, sightseeing and stuff for a couple of days so they can make their decision. Yeah. They said they were, you know, you know, auditioning some other women. And I was like, okay, you know, cool, no problem. I, hey, I got a free trip. <laughs> cool with me. You know, <laughs> get a chance to sightsee. First time ever flown. Get a mm-hmm. chance to go to L.A. I mean, like, yo, that's like the best. <laughs> Win-win. Right. <laughs> so did some sightseeing. So they called me a few days later, and they said, hey, we want to bring you to the studio. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, so I'm going to the studio, and I get there, and Maxie from the Mary Jane Girls okay. is there. Wow. And she's like, oh, my God. That's a Rick James group. Right. Yeah. That's Rick James' soul group. <laughs> so she was like, hey, Kia, how you doing? I'm like, okay, this Maxie knows my name. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, wow. I mean, that was my first time meeting her. So I'm trying to figure out how she even knew mm-hmm. my name. So obviously they had been talking about me. Right, right. right. Uh, good things. All good things. And so um, she said, I think they chose you. I think they chose you. I was like, Maxie, do you think so for real, girl? <laughs> she said, yeah, I think so. I said, okay, well, I guess I'm about to find right, out. Right. So I walk into the studio, and they're like, hey, you know, you're the next female vocalist. Um, and we immediately started recording. Wow. It was straight to work. Wow. Y'all, right in the booth. <laughs> you hear it now. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. And it was great. <clears throat> and, I, and I'm glad I had the opportunity. Um it was a good, I would say, a good controlled environment. Okay. You know, I think the guys were very protective of me because I was young. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my mom was like, make sure you take care of my daughter. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's my only baby girl. Right, right. And, um, and I think they felt that, you know, that charge to do that. So I never got a chance to experience any of the crazy stuff that happens <laughs> in the industry. Say, now, you know, I mean, I went to a few parties, but it wasn't like – you know, anything crazy, somebody offer many drugs, right, and right, bunch right. Of, you know, crazy drinking and half naked and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Like I, I didn't experience those things. And I'm, and I'm glad that I, Did you sign an I NDA. Didn't. You can't talk about it. No, <laughs> it's been up. It'll been up by now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, definitely would have been up, but right. no, I mean, there, there was no craziness going on and I'm grateful because Atlantic star has always been a clean group. Yeah. You know, yeah. their music is clean. They talk, they talk about love. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, in all different forms. Um, of course, you know, everybody's favorite of theirs is Secret Lovers. Of course. You know, always. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and I, <clears throat> even though I wasn't on those songs, I thought it was really nostalgic that I got a chance to be with the group because I grew up on Atlantic Star yeah, 2. Yeah, man. So it was like, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is great. Yeah. But they're very down-to-earth um, Christians as well. Okay. You know, so I think that was one element, too. I think God knew that he could put me in that place space there, and be right. protected at that time. Now, at what point, um, since you said that, at what point did you, I guess, start, I guess, got saved? Mm-hmm. Was it be 
pre Atlantic Star? It was actually, but you know, I didn't know what I had done, G. Okay. <laughs> like, what's happening here? I'm going to be serious. I got <laughs> saved, was out in the spirit for about an hour. Mm-hmm. It was like this big production. It was so interesting when I look back on it. <laughs> Everybody was slain was in the, the spirit. Production? I went to this small, no, serious. I went to this small church with my girlfriend. She kept bugging me. Come on, go to church with me. Come on, go to church with me, Key. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. my God, let me just go so this girl can stop bothering me, right? Um, and so I went with her and every, I'm serious, like the pastor was on fire and he was real fiery. Next thing you know, <laughs> you who the pastor everybody, was? no indeed, <laughs> everybody laid out in the, I don't remember the name of the church. I don't remember it. I just right, remember right. the experience. Gotcha. And so I remember that I really knew that I had an experience mm. uh, with God, but I didn't know what to do. And there was no follow like no up, discipleship no discipleship yeah. or anything. And then at that point, I felt like I had fulfilled my duty like to good. my friend. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I told you I would come. I came. Uh-huh. I ain't coming no more. You know, I even got Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And so when I, you know, when I look back on it, I'm like, wow, God. So two years later. It wasn't until two years later. That was in 1992. 92. Okay. It wasn't until two years later that I decided to give my life to God. Mm. and really live for him yeah yeah in 1994 but so that's the same time i had atlantic gone through star the whole atlantic star experience yeah. that was in 93 93 okay went through that whole experience and i think coming out of that and going into a pra- place of depression um and and really not sure about what i wanted to do with my life at that point mm-hmm. you know um and so when you're in that place and then God can encourage you through your own music mm-hmm. that come out of this mess that you in with this depression and get up and do what I call you to do. You know, it was, it was a humbling experience. And so from that point forward, I just kind of never looked back and my relationship with the Lord has just continued to grow. Okay. I've grown, yeah. you know, leaps and bounds, you know, since 1992 mm-hmm. and then 94, you know, just really walking with God yeah. <clears throat> so going to the parties with the Atlantic Star and with your fame and stardom at that time, um, were you in the place where you were, um, like if somebody do offer me some though, or were you some drugs or, mm. or were you in the place of, yeah, I ain't really with this anyway? Oh, no, I definitely was never with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think <clears throat> growing up, you know, I watched different ones in my family deal with drug abuse, mm-hmm. alcohol abuse. One of the things I always said was I would never do that. Gotcha. I need to have control of me. And I realize and understand that when you on, on some type of controlled substance, you don't have control. Yeah, <laughs> and anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and being that far away from home, you know, not knowing anybody. Mm-hmm. No. There was definitely no happenings with that. Um, I never had those those issues or encounters with drugs and alcohol like that. Yes, yeah, so I've been really blessed because I know most artists, mm-hmm. you know, fall into that at some point in time. My thing was the depression. Okay. You know, so post Atlantic Star. Yes, post Atlantic Star. <clears throat> now, what brought that back? But, well, before you mention that, um, we'll talk about that. What? Because I know you eventually left. How long were you mm-hmm. with them? Was it a year or two? It was about a year. Mm-hmm. Um, it was about a year. Y- you left them, I guess, over differences of opinions or something to that effect? Well, we couldn't quite work out all of the agreement in, with the contract. Okay. Um, and so, you know, because of that, I said, well, hey, you know, then I'm just not going to be a part of the group. Mm-hmm. And so I just decided not to do that. Now, was it that you weren't going to get, I mean, because you were lead vocalist at this point. Mm-hmm. And only female. female, I believe. Yeah, yeah. only lead female. Yeah, um, they weren't trying to give you the, not the lion share, but the just do <laughs> share. Uh, well, you know, anytime you come into something that's already established, um, you yeah, always yeah. know that mm-hmm. you're not going to get what everybody else <laughs> yeah, gets. Yeah, yeah. But I, I honestly believe that in anything, it should be fair. Gotcha. And so if it's not fair, then I can't. I can't do that. And, you know, being young, I was 23 at the time. I think a lot of times, you know, people just want to get on Mm -hmm. and be in. But I had standards Mm -hmm. and I had researched the industry, contracts, all of those kind of things. I mean, I was able to look through my own contract and kind of 
you know, yeah, yeah, pencil some things here and there and then give it to the attorney. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that as an artist you have to do and you have to decide, hey, am I going to give away this? Is it worth it? Mm-hmm. Um, as an as a as a as a solo artist, I could have gotten so much more. Mm-hmm. But, you know, is that what you want to do, you know? And so you got to kind of weigh your options and figure out which one's best for you. And so I felt at that time for me, it was better for me to just not be with the group and, and to work on, you know, solo endeavors, which I still couldn't do for a while because I still had a contract, contract agreement yeah. with, with Arista records. So, um, you know, hindsight 2020, would I have stayed with the group or would I have, um, I, I don't know. That's you know, people question. ask me that, have asked me that question before. Kind of like power through. Yeah. Would mm-hmm. I have just, just kind of, you know, tried to make that work? Um, I don't know. I, 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 can, I really can't answer that question. Do I have any regrets? No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Now did the, the depression come about because I guess for a moment you were riding this high and now it's like, what do yeah, I do? What, what do I do now? Where do I go? Who am I? It wasn't a thing of who was I, but it was more of what do I do next? Okay. You know, when you come from something like that, like you said, you're kind of in a in a high place, mm-hmm. and um, you know, anything that's not lateral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what's this? Like, hey, you got your own deal, girl. Sign your name on the right, dotted right, line. Right. You literally turn down something that you don't have anything else to go to next. Wow. You know that kind of just that's that's kind of where I was, yeah. and so it, it just kind of made me feel. You know, I was I was I was really down on myself. Not not so much in my abilities, but you know, just like what do I do next? What do I go mm-hmm. after this? And I'm sure c- having to come home, mm-hmm. like, and everybody's like, oh. Uh, no, actually, no? they okay. were excited. They were like, oh, my God. I mean, I was calling them while I was in L.A. They were like, oh, my God, you calling me from L.A.? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I just have a different job, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think people were very embracing. Okay. When I came home, they were mm-hmm. happy to see me. You know, um, they were celebrating the accomplishment. They knew the album was still coming out. Mm-hmm. My voice was still on it. Yeah. And, you know, album, and so that was time. the album Time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The album Time. So, you know, I've then transitioned um, in meeting the person who actually asked me to, the, telling me that I should be singing for the Lord. Um, we met in, in the mall, Forestville Mall. Oh, really? Wow. We met at Forestville. Mom just walking through the mall. He's like, oh, my God, Key, is that you? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, Lord, I don't want nobody to see me right now. <laughs> you know, you get in one of those places. Right. But I was happy to see him. Okay. Um, and he was like, oh, great. I can have you singing my gospel explosion. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I done told you a zillion times I don't sing gospel. And he looked at me. He's like, why don't you just come? Just come to the rehearsal. Just come through. I'm like, oh, my God. Gosh, mm-hmm. okay, here once again, you know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> right. Uh, from then I did, I joined the group. It's called Jesus and Me Ministries. Okay. Jam for short. And we did, we traveled, we sang, we did concerts. Yeah, I was doing some recording. I was doing some writing. And I was coming into my own as a gospel artist. And I decided to kind of give all that other stuff up. Okay. Which nobody ever thought I would do, Right. Um, and we can talk about been some known other as things the a little. R and B, absolutely, singer. yeah, absolutely. The R and B love song yeah, singer, yeah. you know, the girl that belts out the songs, a little tiny girl <laughs> with a big voice, you know, all that kind of the angelic voice. I uh-huh. mean, that, those are the things that people would comment and say. And I, you know, I really, I don't know. I, I think that you have to know who you are. And no matter what anybody says or what you go through, you Mm got to be able to persevere and push through that. So I was pushing through all of that, and God was my answer. Okay. He was my answer at the time, and I'm glad. I'm glad that that was the answer, not drugs and alcohol and and illicit sex and, you know, all of the things that so many other people find themselves in when they find them in that place of, you know, depression and things. Yeah. Um. And so now you are, <clears throat> I guess, in a sense, kind of making the transition into gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, how was that transition? I mean, because, you know, you're going from R&B mm-hmm. to gospel, uh, not quite the same, mm-hmm. uh, different kind of audience, mm-hmm. different experience. Um, and, you know, 
it's the performance versus mm-hmm. ministry. Oh boy, did I learn <laughs> that quick. Like you can't be uh, moving like that to <laughs> <a> <laughs> <laughs> Jesus and me loves Jesus and you. <laughs> listen, listen, it's so interesting that you should say that because that was one of the things that God had to deal with in me first mm. was the performance spirit. Um, knowing when to use it. Okay. And knowing when not to use it. Yeah. And yeah. in, in, in the, in the lines of ministry, I don't perform in the lines of ministry. I minister the word of God through song, Mm -hmm. um, making that transition as an R and B artist all of my life. I didn't, didn't know that. And some, I had to be taught that, you know, as I, as I went through my journey. Um, but now I can still perform, Mm -hmm. but there's a place for that. And so if someone asked me to come and do a love song, I'm not going to be singing, you know, like I'm at church. Right. I'm going to sing and I'm going to perform the song. Right, right. Um, and so I, I had to learn that distinction. And once I did, it was like, oh, okay. I see now, Lord, mm-hmm. what this purpose is. <laughs> and, you know, I flow in that, whether it's a song that we all know, whether it's a prophetic song that God just gives me on the spot mm-hmm. in the midst of service or or, or, you know, or a conference or whatever. Um, you know, I'm grateful that I, I know how to do both mm-hmm. because I think – God is going to use that. Matter of fact, I don't say I think I know like over the last month, he's been like edging me like I'm going to send you back into the entertainment arena. OK. And I'm not saying that I'm I'm going to go crazy. Y'all <laughs> don't be like, what's going on with Celine? That No, I'm I am. I am always going to love God mm-hmm. and I'm always going to put him first yeah. no matter what. Yeah. But there are souls that need him and Mm -hmm. they're not coming into the church and they're going to witness my life and my, and and my love for God. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be able to say, Oh wow. I want to know that God that, you know, to lean, I'm having a rough time. What do I do? Mm -hmm. want? Okay. Well, let's pray. What you mean? Pray how we do that. Yeah. You know, those are, those are moments you all that are so like, I see them Mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. So I'm excited about that because I know God is going to use me now that I'm grounded and rooted in him for real. Mm-hmm. And that's important. That's what's up. Um, now, does that entail like R&B or is that you taking the gospel into the, I guess, the R&B arena? That's a good question, G. You going to have to stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving it all away. Yeah, I thought we going to get exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving it all away, but I just say you guys stay tuned, but just mm-hmm. know that God is love. Um, I, and I Facts. believe that uh, there aren't enough love songs in the arena of gospel or R and B that are true love songs. Mm-hmm. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the person that's singing it, really has a relationship with God mm-hmm. and understands how he meant relationships between a man and a woman mm-hmm. to be. And you can tell your story no matter what it you know looks like in taste. Yeah. Right? And not be raunchy and mm-hmm. nasty with it. And God can still be pleased because they're going to try to get to know Celine the artist mm-hmm. like we're doing today. Right. And they're going to see that my life doesn't do this. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be all over the place with my relationship with God Mm -hmm. It's solid. And so that's important to me that they encounter that. So I I believe that love songs are coming for the near future for Tulane. Yes. And um, and 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 just know that if you hear them, they're coming from that place. Yeah. Well, I mean, you said you you mentioned you sing. uh, I will always was I'll always love you. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the things we all know, Whitney never uh, hit her. Uh, her relationship, uh, her relationship with God, with God. you know, she made that known no matter where she yeah. was, even in the lowest of lows. Absolutely, you knew she had she a relationship with Christ, God. and she sang love songs. Mm-hmm. Her songs were all about love. Yeah, you know, they didn't go, they didn't they cross the line raunchy. of you know. Of, Absolutely, yeah. So I mean, I think it could be done. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a. I'm here for that. You, you know what I'm saying? You here <laughs> you know, for I'm that. Here See, for I that. got Jesus. You know what I'm saying? All right, there we go. There we go. Y'all get on board. Yeah, because I know, uh, <laughs> you know, and shout out to Dietrich Hatton. Um, we just had him on the show. Well, it was a little while ago, but we mm-hmm. had him on the show. He talked about the love song that 
love song or love songs that he had written. Mm-hmm. Um, and they did kind of, uh, <laughs> at least this one in particular, cross the, line. Cross the, the street. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, uh, I get yeah, what you, you were trying you to do here. You can't go too far yeah. to the left now. Yeah. You, you, you do have to keep things tasteful, and that's what I'm saying. You oh, know, that one should have just stayed at home for him and wifey. Yeah, yeah. probably so, yeah. D. You probably shouldn't have left that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get what he was doing right but right you know and we there's talk, a line though yeah and, and you really do and i mean even in when i was singing r&b mm. none of my stuff was outside the color and outside the lines yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean they it was all tasteful and so i think going through my journey is just the god god's way of grounding me yeah so that when people do encounter me they encounter him mm-hmm. no matter what i'm doing yeah Absolutely. Yeah. Now that's what's up. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> all right, all right. Now I understand that. It, but I don't know how I missed this, but you have received the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. I did from the yeah. from from President Barack, Barack Obama. Obama. President. I'm sorry, I should have said that. My no, put respect on your name. <laughs> put respect on it. <laughs> President Barack Obama. Yeah. How did that come about? Yeah, someone nominated me for that, and um, actually, my husband and I both have that. Mm. Um, and shout outs to you, honey, mm-hmm. John, uh, John F. Harris. Um, I I was nominated. Uh, he and I both. He got his before I did. Okay. And um, once you know you receive something like that, it's like, oh my goodness, what else more is there yeah. other than the Nobel Peace Prize? <laughs> you know. So that's one that I really do hold near and dear to my heart. Not that any other reward that anybody has ever given to lean is any less. I'm very appreciative for every award that I've gotten mm-hmm. um, and received. And so, yeah, but that's definitely number one on the list. Okay. Well, that's what's up. A major, like major, major accomplishment yeah, that yeah, you've yeah. done in your life. Now, yeah. congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, now, I understand that your son is a producer. He is. He out here blazing tracks. Shout outs to my son. He is 21. R X N E Y. His <laughs> last name is Rainey. So he kind of did an adaptation okay. of his last name. Um, first name is Justin. I uh, woke up one morning, got in the shower like I normally do. Mm-hmm. And a lot of songs always come to me that way. And so as I got out, I said, oh, let me hurry up and get ready. I got to sing this into the, in the phone real quick so I don't lose it. Yeah, yeah. And so I did it. But then I said, mm, let me go run in here and tell Justin about my song. Now, I don't normally do this, y'all, because he's doing his <laughs> own thing. And I said, and normally he's like, oh, mommy, I'm busy. You know, I got this going. He's like, okay, let's see what we can do with it. I was like, really? Uh, okay. I was like, okay, you're going to do a song with your mom. Oh, that's so sweet. He's such such a sweetheart. So we worked on the song, got the basics down. Then I called on my husband who um, plays keys, and I said, honey, I need you to lay this keyboard line down because at that time Justin was still learning to play. Um, And now he's he's pretty proficient. But um, so he did. So it's like a family thing, you know. My nice. husband's on the keys on the song, and uh, Justin did the production for me, and I did the vocals. And so Atmosphere was then birthed. Um, love that song. It's it's very it's a very beautiful song, and I'm very proud of that song because I did that with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is what's up. And uh, your, uh, a couple other songs you have are The Powerful Warrior. Powerful Warrior. Mm-hmm. It's written by myself and my mom, Latina Smith. Who's your co-writer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mama. <laughs> and uh, was produced by 3HP Productions, Malik and um, RJ Bynum. Okay. And so shout outs to my brother, Troy Edwards, Troy and the Edwards. whole 3HP family. Yeah, man. I love you guys dearly. They've always been very supportive of, of Tulane. And so we got together, went to the DMV. And and did a uh, powerful warrior, which is a song that I had had for a while. Okay. Um. And so that was good. And then we we recorded the Christmas song, uh, myself and Amanda, Amanda Lynn. Amanda Lynn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Do you hear what I hear? And so we kind of did all of that around the same time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was good. It's always good to go home and work on stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm ready to roll back. I think I'm coming back around Christmas time. We're gonna be working on some more stuff, Malik and I. Mm-hmm. And so I'm always excited to work on 
you know, new stuff. Now, my other single mm-hmm. that's out along with Atmosphere is called um, Stand With You. Stand With You, yeah. Me and Carlington Roberts, good friend of mine, known for over 15 years. Um, no, he's a he, Sunday he, best. He was uh, Sunday's mm-hmm. best finalist. Uh, awesome man of God, just a great friend. We've had this song forever. We finally got it done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we did the release at my Atmosphere Release Encounter. Okay. Uh, which I had in October. And um, and so we, we, you know, you guys enjoy that. It's a song that's, you know, really needed in this time, G, because we need to know that we need somebody standing right, with right. us. And yeah. that God is going to get us all through, you mm-hmm. know, through dark times, rough times, bad times, good times, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, you wish we need to stand together. Absolutely. So. You know, those, um, there's a, well, I'm sure there's more than one, but these kind of quotes of memes or whatever float around that says something to the effect of check on your good friends too. Mm, yeah. Because a lot good. of times you think they good. They're good. Yeah. You know, Cause and that's they may usually not what be. the response is. Oh, no, oh good. good. Yeah. But really, are they really good? Are they really good? <laughs> and yeah. a lot of times you don't check on them and then. You know, you have something some, happens. There it is. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely yeah. need somebody at all times to stand with you, mm-hmm. check in on you, and mm-hmm. um, you know, make sure you good, good. True. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um. So what? W- wait a minute. Don't you you have a jewelry line? Don't you? Do I do. I have jewelry. It's called um. It's called the Jewel Boss Palace. The Jewel, Jewel, Boss, the Jewel Palace. Boss Palace, and I am the Jewel Boss. <laughs> <laughs> so I have very affordable fashion jewelry line, okay. and um, really, really love. It. I haven't been able to do it as much. You guys have probably been missing my lives because yeah, you used to do yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. But I have been so busy with music and mm-hmm. you know ministry, you know, with the church and everything, yeah, yeah. traveling, and yeah, it's it's been it's been hard. But the website is still there, darling. <laughs> <laughs> and the and the product is still there, still so purchase. you're gonna still purchase. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how has the pandemic um, affected, obviously your your ministry, mm-hmm. and then uh, you and your husband's mm-hmm. ministry, the church? Mm-hmm. How has that been affected? Wow. Well, you know, the pandemic has affected everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, of course, it made us go to to online services for a while. Then we came back into in-person services at the church and then we went back to online Mm. services for a minute and now we're back in 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 person and it has been amazing i mean god is just so faithful you know Um, most churches have lost their churches in the pandemic in the building um god has just supernaturally blessed spirit Mm. of glory worship center where we're we're still open and we've been able to you know, be a safe haven and a place that other ministries can come and have their services as okay. well. Nice. So, um, yeah, that's that's really been a blessing to be able to be a blessing mm-hmm. because when we were kind of homeless as a church, mm-hmm. <laughs> our good friends <laughs> took us in. And, okay. You know, um, and we had services there for a while until I found the building, and mm-hmm. then we were able to go ahead and transition into and our own. Where are you guys located? We're located at twenty nine sixty three South Rainbow Drive in Decatur, Georgia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not too far from William Murphy's Church okay. and not too far from um, Port of Sanford. Yes, yeah. Port of Sanford. Yes, in between the two. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. Um, so actually, let me ask you this because this, this is something I never knew. How did you and 3HP Troy Edwards hook up or link up? <laughs> That's a good story. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. I found Troy online. This is MySpace days? Yes, this was the MySpace days. This was back in 2006, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, he kind of uh, was all over the place. You know, they had... um, something alliance gospel something gospel alliance uh, yeah i think i remember what you're talking and about and that kind of was what i saw okay and so i reached out and from then we've been like you know mm-hmm. been closer than close ever since okay. um and just really you know been a blessing to each other's you know lives we do a lot of business together and just helping to push one another um in whatever god has called us to so yeah that that's how we met Okay, <laughs> so l- one last question before, um, I for you tell everybody how they can find you. If you weren't doing this singing thing, this ministry thing, what would be your thing? 
the the modeling thing. Oh, I want to mention. Uh, I, I meant to mention this, Miss Black. Uh, mm. What Maryland. was it? Miss, Miss Black Maryland yeah. and runner up yeah, first, first runner, runner up, up Miss Black USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I, f- I forgot to mention that. So that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Karen Arrington, the founder of the Miss Black USA Scholarship Pageant. Amazing organization for women of color. Um, was able to get my scholarship so I could go to school. That was nice. awesome. So I, I don't have student loans, y'all. Hey, where'd uh, you go? I went to PG. Did you? Okay, yeah, college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to PG Community College, but, um, but yeah, I, I, what would I be doing? Wow, you know, that's a deep question. I, I think that I would probably be in television. Okay. Um, my mom always wanted me to be a news anchor. Why did I say to myself <laughs> in this split moment when you said that? I was like, I can see her doing the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I probably would have been great at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like their hours. Their <laughs> hours are crazy. <laughs> But I think I love, you know, just that whole thing. And it's another way to keep people informed, mm-hmm. help people. You know, I'm very much a people person. Um, I, I don't know. I could have probably actually seen myself being a nurse, too. Okay. Because I'm a very, like, you know. Like a caregiver care- type. Get, yeah. yeah. I, could, I probably could see myself doing that as well. Oh, that's what's up. Okay. Well, if people want to find out more about Talene, or shall I say Kia? <laughs> <laughs> Kia uh, Talene. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where can they find you, your social media, your website, the whole deal? I think y'all have learned so much about me today. Y'all probably don't even <laughs> want to go to none of my stuff. No, like, we good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know? Now y'all got to get these CDs. This and, is yeah, true. Man. Yeah, you can go to my official website, which is Talene Harris, T-A-L-E-I-N-H-A-R-R-I-S.com, TalenHarris.com. Uh, all of my social medias are there facebook twitter instagram um i now i'm trying to get into this tiktok thing yeah. I, y'all i haven't quite gotten there yet i'm on there though but you know, i, I think don't that, really know what to do I, you know <laughs> I, I think the easiest that. way for you to start is do, if you have some old video clips i've been posting them but post i don't those. but i just feel like it's like that's bogus like i need to be doing a <laughs> like, tiktok <laughs> Like, yeah, a challenge. You know, I need to be learning how to do one of those dances or something. That's funny. I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah. So you can find, <laughs> find me on TikTok as well. Um, but yes, I, I if you want to book me for any kind of you know women's conferences, I am a certified life coach as well. I uh, had a show called the Divine Lifestyle Show with Talene, which I am bringing back as okay. a podcast. So you guys stay tuned for that. The, the top of the year. Really excited about that. Nice. And so uh, y'all probably gonna see my my brother g wade over i'm gonna pull him y'all i'm gonna so because i gotta i gotta give him back all he just <laughs> got me good today i wasn't expecting this but it's been a you're gonna be digging deep for me now all right it must have buried ex- now. oh lord <laughs> i'm gonna have to do some excavation right. y'all. Uh, but it has been an extreme pleasure to be here with you today and um just a lovely flow of conversation i, I love when interviews don't feel like interviews they yeah feel like no. you just chit chatting and, and chopping it up and so thank you well, Thank this is good. Know. Like I said, we we just been knowing each other for years at this mm-hmm. point, and it's always love when we see each other. And uh, 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 you know, I'm a fan, I'm a supporter, uh, a friend, Thank you. all the above. Thank and so, you, you know, I, I'm I'm here that. for it. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm learning to say vice these, versa. These, these smooth these some things, smooth yeah. things yeah. like the kids. <laughs> little, I'm here yeah, for it. I'm here, I'm here for it. I'm with it. You know, that part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's oh what's God, up. that's too funny. <laughs> I have to ask my son, y'all, what's the new slang, Justin? Because I'm not trying to sound old. Right. You know, he's like, mommy, don't even worry about it. You good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Another part is you just got to make sure you're not trying too hard. I know. Because now you look corny. Then you look crazy. Yeah. This is true. This so is true. yeah. Anywho, <laughs> it's your boy G Way holding it down, G Way Podcast, and I'm kicking it alongside with my man Deacon Dirty. Y'all know what it is. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy G Way holding it down, and I want to thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the G Way Podcast. Now, be sure to subscribe to this channel, click that notification bell to stay up on all the latest videos and content that we post, and that we just appreciate everything. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at G-Way Podcast. Come in.